Hello, my friends. So is everything going there? Going well? Well, this is the hottest event in the world. Oh, nice. Well, today I'm going to talk to you some learnings and experiments I've been doing that I think that might make you like more performant and make more applications, applications scalable using Node.js. I'm Eric. As she said, I've been working with content in Brazil and I've been teaching a lot Node.js streams. Okay, first of all, we have Node.js streams. One of my favorite features uh, ever, but one of the most scary one, right? H how many of you have worked with Node.js streams? Oh, nice, nice. Well, let me move here. Node.js streams, yeah, we, we know that the docs doesn't help much, right? We've seen a lot of struggle and people trying to move to promises anyway because it's kind of hard. But today my goal is to get you some ideas so you can go home and start experimenting. And I actually built two projects, two cool projects for you to experiment, okay? Well, all of these presentations are already on my GitHub, on my links. I will put all the links at the end of the presentation so you who is watching, watching at home Please stay at the end because I think it will be worth it for you, okay? And if you can, please take pictures, mention me, mention the event on the social media because this helps us a lot, okay? Well, Node.js, oh, Node.js. First of all, I think this, is, this talk leads to people who say, Node.js is not for it, Node.js is not for that. But I think the problem is between the table and the share, right? It's not the language or the platform itself. Well, I've heard a lot of people say, oh no, let's use other platform because Node.js or JavaScript is single threaded, we cannot handle memory, we, can ha we cannot handle like big loads of data in memory. Well, I was like, okay, uh, what if we try searching, right? We, what if we, we, we do like Kyle said, now let's lo look into the docs or learn JavaScript deeply. But yeah, we are JavaScript developers, right? We sometimes we, most of people I think came from the front end side. I came from .NET for the other side, right? But when we came here, we heard a lot of these stories and we were like, oh man, I'm learning this for nothing. I'm just wasting my time, so no. Let me show what they usually do. Well, first of all, they have like a Node.js project. They are trying to download a file and then they download the file on the JavaScript side, they save this file on the disk, and then they are trying to process this whole data, okay? So the Node.js is trying to read all this, the five gigabytes of memory, like of the file in memory, and the system just go crazy, right? So I think parsing data or just grabbing all this data in memory in JavaScript won't work for you as it could work in .NET or Golang or other languages. Because it's a different approach, right? It's not because the language or the platform doesn't do. So this is not the way we can process big loads of memory in, in a performant or scalable way. Well, first of all, yeah, let's remember it. We can First of all, avoid using like blocking loops or uh, even blocking operations on Node.js, right? This could like block everything. And I think the most problem on this approach is if we, s we have some problem on the process, everything just stops, right? So we have to stop working again and process the whole five gigabytes in memory. I've seen faces here, you look familiar, right? Yeah, yeah, I know I, I have suffered a lot with that. And actually, when we reach like the disk or we got out like out of memory, we have to restart from scratch. And I, I've seen people doing like integration, like uh, uh, process at night just to make it easier, but it just uh, became harder. And actually, managing storage and all this kind of stuff, it's hard. So let me present you the most powerful feature on the Node.js, the Node.js streams. Well. Actually, they are here since 2010. It was one of the first features in the Node.js core, and it actually have a lot of uh, good features for us to process things in memory. Well, I, I know that this kind of time, right? This is almost seven here. And I like to, to compare technology with our real world, right? So on this series, uh, it's a, a, a series about a robbery and all, a lot of stuff, but they had a problem. 
they had tons of gold and they had to move it. So they decided, well, like, oh man, how I will get all this gold out of the bank so I can process or, or do whatever I want. So they got it and they just like melted it down and actually split it in pieces, right? In golden nuggets so they can process and can move it on demand. So this is actually exactly the same what we will do on our Node.js project. So now you have your project, you have your five gigabytes or terabytes of data, and now your golden, uh, your ton of gold was like uh, uh, transformed to a liquid state, right? For us in Node.js, this liquid state, which makes our easier to make it uh, work to other states, is the buffer. So we, tr we turn out each into a buffer, and this buffer we we return in small pieces. So in the, in the case of the gold, it will be like the small portions of gold, right? But the thing is, we can parse it, we can process it on demand, individually. So we can read the data as it's uh, available for us, we can like send to other processes, and then we can save on database on demand if we want. So this is very, very powerful for us. Well, the first thing I, I really uh, I wish someone told me was what I ca the, the Node.js streams types, what's the difference? So uh, first of all, the Node.js streams, uh, are basically something to process data on demand. And we are uh, running readable streams. So readable streams are actually our source, right? It could be an API, a database, a file, or other, even other streams flow. So everything that you must read, you will use the, the, our readable stream, okay? Just to keep in mind, it's anything that you can gradually consume information. Just like, never mind about like getting data on e-memory and processing them all. That this is uh, uh, horrible. Okay, for transform streams is actually our uh, uh, step to process data. It's it could be like a parsing, or it could be like uh, uh, calculations, or uh, or other like re renaming projects and fields and so on. So in this case, I have like a, a simple JSON. I will transform it, and I just change the fields, and I I will re redirect it to other uh, process in this case. So yeah, it's very nice. Well, the third one is actually our output, right? Where it will go at the end. So what it will became for us. So here, I just parsed everything from our previous step, and I can save it on a other file if I want, or in a database, or even just plot it on our terminal and make some good reports. Well, uh, I've, I've been thinking, like I've been studying and I've been teaching JavaScript for a while and some people were like, no, I've never seen Node.js streams in my whole life. And I was like, no, I can prove it that you've been using, but you've been using uncautiously. So on Node.js core, you have, uh, or on Express, and never uh, like library you use to control your routes and create uh, web APIs, you have handler, right? And it has like the request, the request and response, right? The request is usually our data source, right? The user sends data for you and you can read this data. And actually, we have the response. The response is usually going back to the customer, right? So, oh, I just processed your data, I made some calculations here, and then I will send you later. What people usually don't think about it, it's actually the request is a readable stream, and the response, oh, the request is a readable stream, and the response is actually a writable stream, okay? So you read from a side, and you write to the other side. This is why we saw on the on the Luciano Luciano stock that we can use for a way to consume our data, or we can even write to the customers using write and 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 so on. This is just we are just getting started, right? Well, this turns and gets some ideas, right? Like, oh my God, now. I can get rid of some Python processing script that I have there and use JavaScript because my team would like to use JavaScript for it, okay? That's not just because we are a fan, it's just because my team is used to, to make more JavaScript projects. 
So yeah, I prepared some projects. So nothing of that is good without any like ideas, right? A actual projects. So for this talk, I gave, I prepared two projects for you, so you can access after the talk as well. And I think it will open your mind for the most powerful feature in the JavaScript. First of all, I've heard people saying, "Oh, JavaScript on Node.js is not for reading file because it gets low." And I was like, "Is low in comparison to what?" Okay. So here, I just made an example, reading an infinite file from the Linux. So I'm using like the, the urandom here, and I will just read it infinitely, process it infinitely, if I, if I care. Like terabytes of data, I don't care. I will just read it and process it in memory, right? In, on demand, actually, not in, in memory. A good, a good example for it is this first project I, I got for you, which is a, a Google Drive clone, right? I made this on a, a bootcamp online on my channel. So yeah, go there and subscribe as well later. And showing how to process data on demand and how to upload data on demand in this case. So here, uh, the goal is you can upload a code or you can upload your file and you can still navigate, right? You are not locking anything. Okay, after this, we are thinking like, how can we split our task, right? I think the first problem we saw is like, I have a for loop and I have to process like each step right here. And this is where the mess starts, right? So in Node.js streams, we can see like for our source, which is a readable stream, could be a CSV file. And I can have like a process just to parse it from CSV to JSON. That's it, my single, like function in this case will do something like smart. Then I can use pipe, which is literally a pipe that passes water because the streams came from this analogy. And we just move on and process it, even parsing it or making some calculation reports. And then we have our final writable stream. We got from one side, we are, as long as the data is coming, we are saving on the database and we are controlling the whole flow, okay? Wow, this is the, I think, one of the most exciting projects I've built using Node.js because we know processing files and that not, that's not so easy, right? Because we are thinking a lot of stuff and I'll show you the, the real challenges. Well, to make this project, I was thinking, well, this, is, this could be nice if I instead clone the Spotify, I extended it. So when I was a child, I was like, oh, this radio, maybe they are like on the big room and how they are playing songs on the background. Like when someone says like something stupid, we see laughs, like we heard laugh on the, um, some laughs on the background. Or when someone says something smart, we, we hear claps. So it was like, why not making a Spotify radio, right? Well. Let me show first the idea, and then I will go to the code and show the real challenges. So this here could be a really cool for us to like move forward on the Node.js things work. Well, first of all, I had an, an API, right? And I, I thought in two different pages. One, I have the admin, right, the controller, which will, start, will start or stop like a transmission. And I could have some buttons to add some effects right there. And the other side, my customer will just play and hear like the podcast or the video he's trying to, to listen to. Well, the first thing, the user just played it, but he didn't hear anything, right? He haven't heard anything so, so far. But the API is sending like a, a string, like I'm just linking it. I'm just opening the channel for communication, but I'm not sending any data because I have nothing, the, the transmission haven't started yet, okay? So the controller goes there and start the stream. So now my API reads a file, which be, could be like a podcast of 10 hours if we want, and then I start of the same chain of communication, my user can hear it at the end. So he now we are, uh, saying to all customers that are just listening to our transmission right now, and it's working. Well, now came like the, f the real hard part, right? How do I put like 
in like processing memory almost real time, that's not real time, right? But I cannot pause the process, like the previous process. I'm just listening to an audio and I have to like join two audio strings at the same time and show to them at the end. So here I have other MP3 files, which is uh, each button that I have on this screen. And then I have actually the process going there. So my customer is just, or my client in this case, is just hearing my podcast and someone said something stupid or someone just uh, uh, said something really nice. So I will click on the button on the applause and then I will get this string of data, this other file, and I will put them in the same pipe, right? They are just redirecting so this is uh, uh, something nice that for, for, for making using Node.js strings, right? So as long as I have chunks coming from the podcast and as long as I have uh, other chunks coming from the applause, I will send both together, but they have to be synced. I will show the, in the code how I made it as well. Okay, I think you are curious to see how it's working, right? Oh. Let me get here. Well, let's see it working first. But you know, it's almost eight, so I'm not sure if the God of the live code will work right now, but let's pray with me, okay? Well, in one, one side I have the play, which is very small here. I'm just gonna play it. Do you use other high-tech devices besides computers? <laughs> Okay, I'm just playing it, but we cannot hear anything. But then I will start the stream. Learn how to use the computer. Yes, I think so. Children should be given chances to approach the computer. Oh wait, wait, wait! I think. Yeah, yeah. I will just restart the application because I think it was already playing it. So we stop it. It's a Docker file, so all dependencies and our projects. Ooh. Oh, the God of Life demo is not helping today. Oh, no, it's not. It's just, yeah, man. You started and now you stop it. You start it. Okay, the application is running again. So it's everything on Docker, so it should run on Linux or Windows and so on. I'm going to open both of our applications, and then I will click first on the play. So we are not hearing anything, right? Perfect. Now I'm going to click start. It's working, right? So the podcast is happening, and in the background, we have a controller, right? Do you have your own so computer? Yes, I owned a personal laptop when I was in university. Well, he's using a personal laptop. How I don't like do it. How you use the computer? Almost. Have you ever joined any computer? Oh, nice. Have you yes, heard? years ago. But yeah, it's cool. Let's Microsoft add more laughing. You know, I'm an accountant. Nice. So managing business records would be much easier for me well, using a computer. Well, if I click all of them what at the same the time. What are advantages of using the computer? Connected to the internet, we can check. It's just merging it, right? Listening to music, watching movies are even more convenient. Do you use other high-tech devices? And then I can stop the stream. Yes, apart from a computer. Nice. So this is a single chain of communication making all these things work at the same time. But you notice there's a few delay, right? This, this delay is because we control the data flow. This is like a throttling. So, so we are just sending data to the browser. So uh, the speed must be not too high. So we are have like bigger pieces of songs, but not must not be like so small that like uh, we cannot send a, a lot. Let me show you in the code. I think it'd be easier to show. Well, here I think is the most important part of this code. Uh, it's actually on the GitHub, you can take a look later as well. But yeah, we are throttling, so I got from this info from our uh, audio, and then I said, okay, 
uh, when, how is the pieces that I can split it? So I split it in even more eight parts, and then I start linking them all. So this broadcast just sends information to the other customers, all users connected to my applications. But then, when you click at the button, there is where the magic happens. Let me sh just show here. Well, I'm using here a child process to do everything on the background, and I'm using Sox. Sox is a library, so you can use uh, and parse audio in on demand. So I just send my audio. I send which audio I want to merge in this case, and the output would be a string for me. So I'm just linking them and sending and just receiving this data as long as I have uh, this data available. Oh, it's nice, isn't it? Oh. Well, the, the good thing about here, uh, it's we, we can control even the processes. We can uh, uh, control the how the the flow are, how the data are available for our users. So this is very nice. Okay, let's go to the presentation so you can take a look deeply, uh, a, a look at it more. Okay, so I think this is good, right? Oh, very nice. Now you are thinking, right, we are processing data in, the, in memory, we are getting data, like could be from a, a huge database making integration tests or integration platforms, but it's just came with data for me and I'm just moving on and so on. So yeah, I really, I really like this kind of stuff. So whenever you have like a download file, you have to download a file for somewhere, or you have to process large files or even make video streaming, or actually you, you want to insert data on the database. I know that for database we have some caveats, okay, but we can use Node.js streams to process like big, real big loads of data in memory. So just keep in mind, everything that you can read or read or, or write data in memory, oh, Anything you can read or write data on demand, you can use Node.js streams easily. Not easily, but you get my point, okay? Well, just to summarize everything, a readable stream is ever the data source that you have. Read a file, download, or just create a, a fake data. A writable stream would be our output, okay? You can save file, you can send logs, send emails and messages and so on, and the transform is uh, the little processes in the middle, okay? The other steps to really came to the final solution. And actually on the Node.js 18, we, it came with the dot .map and dot .filter functions. So we can avoid using the transform string and we can use it as an array. So yeah, take a look at it because this is very exciting. And feel the power of the Node.js streams. Try a lot because I know that Node.js has a lot to improve, and that's the only thing or, or the only way that you can help on it, okay? Well, if you want to take a look deeply, I've been building a, a whole complete course using Node.js streams to process terabyte of files, using how to test it, and a lot of other like experiments I've been doing and more other things, so I will add the link at the end. And all my presentations are already on my website if you want to take a look later and actually go through the other contents I've made. I think you can get a lot of good studies and a lot of tasks to do after your work. Okay, so thank you so much for having me. Well, our links are here. I hope you all follow my, my subscribe on my YouTube channel, okay, so we can get we can keep in touch and actually go through the the web course that I think this can help you a lot. And muito obrigado, valeu.